Well, I'm not sure I, how I follow that one up. When I was uh, Sam's age, I, I don't think I was in front of 1,400 people, so impressive. Good job, Sam. Uh, so my name is Dan Walleen, and uh, I've given 60-ish, 20-ish, and now 5-ish minutes talks. I'm pretty sure next year it'll be like zero or something. I'm, that's the trend. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Docker. Uh, this is a warm-up talk for tomorrow, where I have an hour talk. All right, so uh, again, my name is Dan Walleen. We're going to skip that because we don't have much time here, and it's not, there we go, and it's not skipping. Let's move forward. All right, so how many are using containers? Okay, quite a few, not a ton, but a lot, of, a lot of you. So why would you use them? Well, how many have a shipping process that feels like this? You put the code in the boat, it sails across the waves to the land of staging or production, and you hope it doesn't sink. <laughs> Anyone? Been there, done that. Well, what we're going to talk about really quickly today, and tomorrow I'll go into more detail for those that want it, is what if I want to containerize every part of my app? What if I want to make it so that this app can actually run on my laptop, on my staging, on my production, and even in the cloud exactly the same way? That's what we're going to talk about here real quick. So I might have multiple services, each of these would be in its own type of container. That means that I like to run Nginx. Anyone run Nginx by chance? It's awesome. For uh, my Angular code. Well, that could then call into maybe Node or ASP.NET Core or Java or whatever it may be. So it might, means that you could have microservices, you could have your spas, you could even have a traditional web apps calling into here. But the idea is that when I ship, this thing called a container that we're going to talk about briefly, everything I need is ready to go. The version of my server, environment variables, security settings, code, everything is available there. So what are containers? Well, in a nutshell, in just a sec, I'm going to show you these things called images. And one of them is uh, Nginx. And then uh, tomorrow, I'll show you a whole bunch of these put together in kind of a microservice type of uh, architecture. So what we do is we take an image that might have our Angular code, and we build it into a container, or run it as a container. So we build an image, and we run it. So how do I use it? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to pull an image down local. So you'll install this thing called Docker Community Edition, at a minimum, and run Docker pull. And then in this one, I'm doing uh, Alpine, and uh, it's a really small Linux variant. And then Nginx is running on Alpine Linux. Very, very cool. Now, there's other commands you can run. I put these in the slides. I'll give you a, a link. But what I'm going to do instead is we're going to jump on over here. And here's a little command I want to show you. All right. So notice this Docker run detached port 80 and forward to port 80. Now, what this means is we're going to hit localhost, forward it into this container, which is going to be Nginx. Alpine. And then this volume, that dash V there, says link from the container folder. This is the Nginx folder, if you haven't seen it, back to my local dist folder. This allows me to run a real server against my Angular code. Now, I can, of course, do this with my other stuff as well. So let me hit Enter there. Now, that just started up the container. And this particular container has an ID. So let's go see if it, it worked here. So we'll run off to localhost, and all right. Actually, that's cached. Hold on. Let's try that again. Woo! Yeah, you like that? <laughs> yeah, Sam, can you come give us uh, the excitement that I saw with yours? <laughs> all right, let me go back here, and let me run it. OK, there we go. Now the, oh, shoot, I turned off Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right, so one thing I didn't do, we're going to really experiment now, is I, I was going to hook in the network, and we didn't do that, I just realized. So, all right, no style sheets, but hey, that's pretty phenomenal Angular app, huh? <laughs> all right, now this is actually running in Nginx, so it's a real server linking back to a local folder right now. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, when you get ready to go to staging or production, something like that, let me go ahead and stop this. So I'm going to do, let me zoom this so you can see a little better. We're going to do a Docker stop. BBB is the first part of the ID, so we'll go ahead and stop that. And then I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to say Docker remove BBB. All right, there we go. 
So now there are no containers. Docker ps-a, ah, let me try that again. ps-a, there we go. Nothing is there. Nginx is now gone. It stopped. Now I can do this with Java servers, Node servers, you name it, PHP, whatever, and it will work as well. Now, the other thing I can do, and I'm just going to um, show you a little cool trick here, is I can do a build and actually copy my code into a container. And now I can ship it to you, and you can run it on your laptop. And you, literally, you could probably get this going in, I'd say, under 30 seconds, uh, anywhere. So you'll notice here this top part, and I'll talk about this more in my talk when I have a little more time, but this does a, a build of our Angular code and copies it into this Alpine uh, Nginx image. And so what it does then is now the container, think of a shipping container, has everything I need. And so if I get you this image I'm going to build, you can now run it. Now, in the interest of time, I've already uh, built it. So let's come on back. Let's go back to here, actually. And uh, I don't know if anybody's tried the Docker extensions for VS Code, but they're awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this Angular core concepts here, and I'm going to say run. Now, that saves you all this typing that you saw me do earlier that I put in. And now I have this container up and running. So the last thing we'll show here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dump the cache again because it tends to cache this. OK, there we go. So now this is the actual code, not on my local hard drive. This is now in the container. Now I could push this up to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, your server, whatever, and we can now run this. Pretty cool. Now, this one is all set up. I can refresh, and it does redirects. And again, this is a very simple app here, but you get the idea. Now, the last thing is, this is cool. That's just one container. Um, how many just run an Angular app, and then you hard code everything? More power to you, right? <laughs> Most of us have uh, RESTful services or microservices or whatever. So the last thing, this one will take a little longer to start up. But tomorrow, I'll talk about this thing called Docker Compose. And this is how you can actually start up multiple containers. This one actually starts up six. Uh, I have ASP.NET Core, Node, Postgres, Mongo, Nginx, and something called C Advisor to actually uh, watch the containers. And so if I go ahead and hit up here, this will take a second. I, I'm not going to have time to actually run it. Oh, I got to stop the other one, actually. So we'd have to, over here, we'd have to come back and say uh, Docker stop 643, because that's tying up port 80. All right, that's stopped. Now we can come back to here. I'm going to make sure these are all down. Now, this is actually dropping everything it just tried to start, but one of them failed because I had port 80 already running due to that uh, Nginx. So once this is done here, OK, now I just stopped six of them. Now I do Docker Compose up. And to wrap up, all right, there we go. Now, this will take a little while because I actually seed the database and do all kinds of fun stuff. So it, it takes about 45 seconds, which is more time than I have. So alas, come tomorrow, and I'll give you more details. So having said that, um, let's wrap up here. Let me give you a link to all this. So I have a bunch of links in the slides. Don't worry about those because you only need one link to rule them all right there. So if you go there, that'll give you a whole bunch. Uh, join me tomorrow about 4.30 if you're interested in more details. And enjoy the conference.